I decided that I should go see a dermatologist. He wanted to do a biopsy of my eyelid because that is where things started. And he said, we need to do it right now. So he turned to his nurse and said, scalpel, please. And he actually cut into my eyelid and took a little piece of my eyelid and then sutured it. She was nervous, but she was also hopeful that the doctors would find out something. The dermatologist called me saying that it was dermatitis. Dermatitis is a catch-all term for any inflammation of the skin, characterized by redness, swelling, and itchiness. The doctor said there was no treatment for this. Barry and I were both really sure that this was not exactly a diagnosis. Then, a week later, her condition suddenly takes a nosedive. I had hives everywhere. It felt like I had ants crawling under my skin and that the ants were on fire. Hives are a very common reaction as an allergy. I scheduled an appointment with an allergist. They tested for every substance that people normally react to. After they did the skin test, they came back in to read the results. I had not a single allergy, according to them. I thought that for sure I would have reacted to something. I'm obviously going through a really horrible time, and there's got to be something that's triggering it. And I figured, with all these things she was testing me for, there's no way that it could come back negative. There's got to be something that's going to blow up or something that's going to indicate, absolutely, this is what you need to avoid. I was totally stunned. We had looked at everything we could possibly think of. I was back to square one. Linda was tired of getting test after test taken with the same results. Everything was negative. So it got to the point where she didn't even want to go back to the doctor anymore to get the tests done because she knew nothing was going, she wasn't going to be able to find any solution to this problem. Well, on the one hand, uh, I, there was some relief because we didn't have to, you know, eliminate the, our cats and uh, buy new furnaces and change our living environment. Um, she wasn't allergic to any of those items. But then the frustration of, well, we're, we're still nowhere. We don't know what you're reacting to. Over the next four months, there's no escape from the relentless outbreaks. Overwhelmed by it all, Linda bravely gets through each one. Still, she has no idea what's about to hit her. I woke up and I was totally on fire underneath my skin. Everything hurt, everything itched, everything was not right. I panicked, it was a very claustrophobic feeling. I was really struggling for breath. She's been hit by her worst outbreak ever. She can't breathe, and her husband is rushing her to the nearest ER. I could tell by the nurse's reaction that I was in trouble. And when the emergency room doctor came in, he told me that I was in anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock is an allergic reaction in which blood pressure drops and air passages become constricted. If not treated immediately, patients most often suffocate and die. They gave me antihistamines and steroids. When they hooked me up, I felt like there's liquid ice going through me. It was such a huge relief. I was able to catch my breath again. Once Linda is stabilized, the ER doctor performs a thorough exam and takes a detailed history. I was diagnosed with idiopathic urticaria hives. Idiopathic urticaria is the medical term for hives that recur but have no known cause. We wanted to know what exactly our options were, how we could prevent this, how we could deal with it. The doctor was explaining that this was gonna be something that I was gonna to have to live with. He gave me a prescription for oral steroids so that when I was going into anaphylactic shock, I could rely on that. I was scared. I was in tears. I was looking for some sort of answer and comfort, and this was not doing it for me. What you're looking forward to is uh, a lifetime of dealing with these symptoms. It's very frustrating. 
because you never want to see a loved one with a problem that defied solving. Turns out I was on the oral steroids much more than I wanted to be. I was ending up in anaphylactic shock every two weeks. Physically, I looked like I had been boxing and I lost a few rounds. I literally looked like a monster. When you're swollen and red and reacting and teaching teenagers, well, teenagers notice everything. I was very nervous that her breakouts were contagious. Day in and day out, Linda is forced to endure the terrifying episodes and uncomfortable stares. Emotionally, I was exhausted. I was not sleeping very well because I was still worried that I would go into anaphylactic shock. I was really struggling. I didn't see a way out. At this point, I'd been through so many things and so many tests that I thought for sure, if this happens again and I get the hives so badly that I go into anaphylactic shock, this is gonna be the end. I can't imagine pulling through it again. I needed an answer. Barry and I decided to document everything that was happening. Well, I'm kind of a, a spreadsheet geek. And so I made up sheets that covered a week, Monday through following Sunday. When I was inflamed and red and swollen and itchy, I would just take a picture of myself thinking when I go to the doctor, I'll be able to show him or her exactly what was happening. She wrote down times, dates, amounts, everything she could think of. After two months of journaling or so, we were sitting looking at my charts and we saw that my symptoms were worse twice a month. From what we could tell, the pattern of the hives and everything, the whole reaction, stemmed from my menstrual cycle. Certain that they're on to something, Linda schedules an appointment with her gynecologist, Dr. Francis Webb Smith. When I first saw Linda, I was very shocked by her appearance. It was very clear that she was reacting to something quite serious. I showed her my journals, laid everything out. I have to admit, I've never heard of a patient experiencing symptoms that correlated with her menstrual cycle like this before. My hunch was to give Linda extra hormones to see how her body would respond. And she said, I have a patch that I could put onto you, on your arm. And if that indeed is the problem, you should suffer a reaction. Linda agrees to the experiment, knowing that any reaction to the patch will confirm Dr. Webb Smith's hunch. We decided that we would try this test on the weekend so that she would be able to be home with her husband. I was scared, but I thought, well, if that's gonna give me an answer, then I'll do it. We also gave her steroids. In the event that she had a severe reaction, that she could take something to treat herself right away. I put the patch on in the afternoon, and I said to Barry, check on me, make sure I'm okay. I was really scared to go into anaphylactic shock. But at the same time, if that was gonna prove to be the diagnosis, then it would be worth it. Over the last year, Linda Fox has been suffering from hives so severe, they regularly send her into anaphylactic shock, nearly killing her. Now, her gynecologist thinks she may know what's behind the harrowing attacks. But to confirm her theory, she needs to trigger one more dangerous episode, this time with a hormone patch. It was 10 or 15 minutes after she had put the patch on, and it was obvious to me immediately that she was in distress. I was panicked because I was going into anaphylactic shock. At that point, it looked like we had a uh, culprit. Based on Linda's symptoms and her response to the patch test, Linda was diagnosed with autoimmune progesterone dermatitis. Autoimmune progesterone dermatitis is a very rare allergic reaction to the hormone progesterone. In a healthy individual, proteins called histamines concentrated in the face and throat, attack foreign substances the body identifies as dangerous. But in women like Linda, for some unknown reason, the body mistakes its own progesterone as a threat. And every time levels peak during the menstrual cycle, histamines are released, creating inflammation. 
Once the production of progesterone gets into the bloodstream, it causes a histamine response. You're going to see in the skin hives and swelling. We're not sure why this manifested in Linda when it did. We don't know what causes this disease. More research needs to be done. My diagnosis is that I'm allergic to my own hormones. I'm allergic to myself. I thought this is crazy. You can't be allergic to something that's already in you, can you? And then I thought, well, looking back, it sort of makes sense. It was extremely important that Linda and Barry documented her symptoms and her experience throughout this ordeal. It was clear that these symptoms were associated with her cycle. You could actually see the cyclic pattern of Linda's symptoms. It was occurring twice during the month. The progesterone kicks up in your body at two different points in a, a woman's cycle, at ovulation and right before your period. So it was spiking in my body, as it does in everyone's body, but I was having an allergic reaction to it. It's now clear that Linda's swollen eyelids were the first sign of the disorder setting in. You see red eyes because that is where your histamines are most within the body and the constant production of progesterone would eventually make the uh, symptoms more severe. And the tissue responds by creating a hive. And you can see them throughout the body, on the chest, at the arms. With the severity of the symptoms, you could go into anaphylactic shock because you have inflammation now in the respiratory system. Ultimately, if she hadn't been diagnosed, Linda could have easily suffocated. Anaphylactic shock can kill. People have died from bee stings from allergic responses. I don't think that there's any doubt that had I not had this diagnosis, I would be dead. Thankful to be alive, Linda is now focused on what the future holds. Unfortunately, the only cure is a radical treatment, one that will shut down her production of progesterone for good. I spoke with Linda and her husband at length about how I felt a total hysterectomy would be the permanent solution as her ovaries were the producers of her hormones. I feel that having the hysterectomy was the only option for Linda not to ever experience the symptoms that she had again. It was either I have the operation and I continue to live a normal life or I end up twice a month not being able to breathe. So for me, the decision was obvious. It ended up being a very easy decision because the end result was that she was gonna be healthy and able to get back to her normal self. I had the hysterectomy in July of 2008. Within, I would say, a week after the surgery, I was much different. For the first time since I had been having these reactions, I was symptom free. And my skin was a normal color and I was not getting swollen up. It was amazing. After struggling to live with a debilitating condition, it's a great relief to finally have it under control. And now, Linda can't help but wonder why it took so long to get a solid diagnosis. Very little is known about this disease. We were able to find maybe two or three articles that had been written about this. It's extremely rare. As a matter of fact, I think there are fewer than 50 cases that have ever been diagnosed. I highly doubt that I'll see another patient with this diagnosis. Today, Linda is symptom-free and back to her old self. Now that I'm healthy again, since my surgery, I am feeling 100% better. I have my energy back. I don't have to worry anymore. This diagnosis has made me realize you're the one who knows your body the best. You have to pay very close attention to what's going on with your body. To write down what's happening to you. Explain it in full to the doctor and work with the doctor. Her due diligence really paid off. It was her perseverance that really get to the answer. Linda's doing great now. She's back to her old self. Lots of energy. My life is fantastic today. My wife Linda is a truly remarkable human being. I'm a very lucky man simply because at some point she decided that she was going to spend her life with me.